Good morning, beautiful morning today as we gather for our worship service, our two churches of First Presbyterian Lake Crystal and First Presbyterian Church in Kasoda. We continue prayers for the ministries of our churches in this uh, unprecedented time and for our, our members and friends as we seek to reach out and share the good news. And we also think especially of our care center residents and the workers who are there doing that important work for our frontline workers, medical teams, and others, for our government leaders, the decisions, the challenging decisions that they have to make, and uh, also for our farm communities. We want to keep them in our prayers at this time. This is also Mental Health Month, the month of May, so special focus on that part of our caring and, and uh, helping our neighbors in that regard. So a number of things we lift up in our prayers this day. A uh, beautiful day as we are journeying uh, to the closing Sundays of Eastertide. In two weeks, we begin the season of Pentecost and uh, celebrate that in a special way as well, coming up in our church, seasons of our church year. So we keep... Uh, in our prayers, uh, many of our, our loved ones, and now as we think of our members gathering in worship together, let us uh, be God's people in a spirit of worship. Our call to worship for today is from Psalm 66, verses 1 through 4. Make a joyful noise to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your, are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you, sing praises to your name. In the opening hymn that we're invited to sing along with is uh, Morning Has Broken, familiar words. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing, fresh from the word. Let us join together as we offer this prayer of invocation now. Gracious God, gentle in your power and strong in your tenderness, You've brought us forth from the womb of your being and breathed into us the breath of life. Breathe now your spirit, your Holy Spirit, into our time of worship today. We pray through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. We share these words of our prayer of confession, let us continue in a spirit of prayer. Holy God, we confess that we bow down before other gods. We have turned our hearts away from you. Our worship of work and devotion to consumerism disorders our love of you and of each other. Forgive us, God, and mend what is broken, that we may be one within you and with you. Amen. These words of assurance, sisters and brothers, by the mercy of Christ, our sins are forgiven. Sing praises with an upright heart as we learn the ways of God. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Alleluia and amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
We share now in the passing of the peace, the peace of Christ be with you all. May God's blessings be with us each and all as we share a peace in the spirit with one another. This time we will share a message with the children. We're on the side of our worship space uh, where our baptism font is, remembering that special gift is part of our faith journey. And as we think about today, the lessons in the Bible speaking about the Holy Spirit and love focused in our gospel reading, the special presence of God's spirit that Jesus is passing on to the disciples and then to all of us. The spirit, we think about that special place in our lives. Sometimes we say it's in our hearts, that place where God really speaks to us, where God is alive inside of us. And God comes to us in that special way. And again, we think of our baptism. At the baptism of Jesus, a voice came from, from heaven and said, this is my beloved one. And he was then baptized in the spirit. That spirit brought that voice. So we thank God for the spirit, the Holy Spirit. As we think about what that spirit does, it communicates with us. And sometimes it's like the wind, the mighty wind. We talked last week about flying a kite and how that wind of the spirit lifts us up. And God's voice is uh, very bold and strong to help us do what we need to do, to give us courage to do the loving things that God wants us to do. So sometimes we have that very strong knowing of the spirit and in the voice of the spirit like the wind. Other times it's very gentle, very calm. The voice comes in a very peaceful way. Sometimes that's a special time when we just need to be alone with God and to think about what God's love is about and to be at prayer. Sometimes we need God's voice to help us in our prayers, to know what to pray for. And uh, a quiet spirit, a very still small voice can come into us. Sometimes in the summertime, if we're in nature, that's a wonderful time just to be alone with God in the God spirit. So let's pause a moment here, just in the quiet of our worship time. It's good to be in moments of stillness and quiet as well in our spirits. And then to offer a special prayer at this time. Oh God, we give you thanks. And repeat after me, oh God, we give you thanks for the gift of your spirit that comes to us like a voice to help us know what you would like us to do as we share your gift of love. And we pray for our loved ones, for our teachers, for the many people who are helping others in this time, in the time of COVID-19. Thank you, God, that we can come to you. Amen. And uh, we all know that special prayer that Jesus taught us, which we'll be saying in worship here later on in our worship today. So we will now hear from God's voice as we share the word, the scriptures for today. And we offer this prayer as we come before God and sharing the scriptures. Lord, enlighten our hearts and minds by your guiding light as shared in the Holy Scriptures, that we may faithfully reflect the Christ light in our lives. Amen. 
Our reading from the New Testament is uh, from the book of Acts this day, Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Oropagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to mortals life and breath and all things. From one one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him... We live and move and have our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, Now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he's fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. And we turn to the Gospel of John once again. As Jesus The resurrected one is sharing the farewell speech to his disciples. This is John chapter 14, verses 15 to 9 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we continue on in the spirit of the Easter tide, and today we want to look at kind of the big picture that the scriptures present to us. Once again, the Gospel of John reading is from the farewell address of Jesus to the disciples. John 14 through 17 is is that special teaching time that Jesus has with them. Today, a focus on the great commandment of love, that agape, unconditional love, which we receive from God and we are called to share out into the world. It's good to also think of some other 
verses that are part of that farewell address. There's no greater love than this that, than to lay down one's life for one's friends, as Jesus would also tell them in a few verses later. So it's good for us to lift up expire, inspiring examples from our lives as well as from the ministry of Jesus as we focus on love as part of that great message for today and for always. The other New Testament readings that we hear about from the early church as they are beginning their communal ministries into that ancient world 2,000 years ago. And again, we try to see how that is reflected into our lives in our modern day church as we continue to carry that, the torch in the teachings of the gospel. And so the Holy Spirit is a very important part of that message. Again, the Spirit is what comes to us, God's voice to us, God empowering us to do God's will. The Holy Spirit continues to enliven our hearts and our minds in the ways of Christ. And as we all know from the story of our Christian faith and from our own personal lives, it can be a challenge to live out that goodness and that love because we know that there's also sin in the world. There's brokenness, there's conflict, there's selfishness, there's meanness out in the world that we contend with. And sometimes we're part of that and need to confess ongoing our, our sins, knowing that God forgives and brings us back to that place of new life to begin again. The book of Acts passage for today takes a look at some of that in terms of idolatry, worshiping idols, a worshiping of people or things in a way that pushes God away from our, our focus of our lives, that gets in the way of our walk with God, some, sometimes to rebel from our devotion to God's ways. In the Old Testament, we remember the story of uh, the people of Israel and how they worshiped a golden calf as Moses came back down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, which spoke of love of God and neighbor. The people were worshiping the golden calf. And we are aware of how gold or stone or silver is mentioned in the book, in the book today, in the book of Acts. All of these different pursuits around riches and power can result in conflicts and can re result in brokenness, things that draw us away from God. So St. Paul raises that issue of idol worship. And idols certainly come in a variety of shapes and sizes, people, places, things. In our day and age, we have a popular TV show called American Idol. And uh, it can be a fine line between idolizing a person, their qualities and achievements, and also finding a person inspiring and helping to enliven and, and to uh, enrich our spirits. Jesus, we know, was tempted in the wilderness with some of that kind of idolatry of prestige, possessions, power. So we come to Jesus always in our prayers, knowing that he has overcome these things. As children, we do sometimes idolize or at least admire different uh, sports stars or, or TV stars, music stars out there in the world. The latest developments in the realm of baseball is where we, I, I know I had my own uh, sports heroes and idols back when I was younger. Uh, baseball, I guess, may be coming back in action this July as part of our enjoyment or pastimes, the uh, simple gifts of uh, enjoying baseball and other sports. Um, we don't have that. Hopefully we won't have uh, that diversion uh, fully taken out from underneath us. Of course, if kids at this time of year coming out into the outdoor sports, they'll need to be careful as well and be monitored with the COVID-19 thing going on. So we're aware of 
were made aware of that, but I want to kind of lift up uh, this baseball image uh, metaphor, a powerful story that relates, I think, in a special way to the issue of idolizing great players. It's a teachable moment story that comes out of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, where many a baseball idol are praised and remembered. Virtually everybody in the Hall of Fame has had some great achievement in batting or pitching or coaching. But then there comes along a player by the name of Harold Henry Reese, whose memorable nickname was Pee Wee, Pee Wee Reese, who played shortstop for the old Brooklyn Dodgers. Pee Wee's statistics are not anything to write home about. He has kind of a catchy name, but really no great statistics that, would, uh, that you would idolize him for. But he is acknowledged for, and I quote what's on his, his uh, marker, or his special uh, acknowledgement. It says, intangible qualities of subtle leadership on and off the field. Intangible, subtle things that are really not that easy to see, are not real obvious. So it isn't until you read the final sentence of his plaque that you see the real reason for Pee Wee Reese's enshrinement in a Hall of Fame. To quote the words on, the, on this uh, plaque, in, he was instrumental in easing acceptance of Jackie Robinson as baseball's first black player. So Pee Wee Reese, pretty much a lone advocate in the realm of an all-white pro baseball league in recognizing and affirming Jackie Robinson as a valued and equal teammate rather than a threat, rather than somebody to be put on the sidelines. So there was that time in pro baseball when it struggled to overcome its own systemic race, racism and eventually baseball's Negro Leagues became integrated into the major leagues. And Jackie Robinson was at the forefront of, of that happening, along with the, uh, the support and the affirmation of Pee Wee Reese. Pee Wee Reese was not an idolized star by any means of a new social order by his play. But his courage, and we could even say sacrificial love that sometimes involved hurtful criticism, was a vital act that helped make a way for a whole new creation of justice, of loving justice, we could say, in our society. So that again calls forth the words from the farewell address that there's no greater love than laying down one's life for one's friends. And again, sometimes that can be challenging. It might affect our reputation in some way. As Jesus also had said on the Sermon on the Mount, that other great speech, blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness' sake. So living out the challenges of love, acts of love, that can be a challenging thing for us from time to time. And bringing it into this time that we're living in now of the COVID-19 epidemic, there are truly a number of unexpected heroes, we could say, inspirers who ins are hopefully inspiring and are inspiring our spirits, doing the good, the, the giving, loving kinds of sacrifice in their work, the frontline workers, so we think of them as uh, part of that loving ministry going out into the world. And perhaps there will be some other greater transformations in our society emerging from the unprecedented uh, pandemic, where we know that there are shortcomings and injustices as far as uh, who in society will um, receive the care that they need. So we're grateful for that sacrificial love. Another level that we can think about in love, another special story, this comes at a time when we think of our vulnerable elderly loved ones, many in the care centers who are especially vulnerable to the illness, to the virus, 
This is a reflection of a son caring about his aging parent by someone named Ron Buford. My mom had Alzheimer's disease and spent her final days in a facility that cared for people so afflicted. It had been months since mama recognized me, but one morning I went out to visit her really early in the morning before going to work. She looked at me and knew me. I canceled my other plans for that morning, knowing two things. This moment might never come again, and it did, didn't. I also knew that no one ever again might be that happy to see me. I still remember those moments as if they happened yesterday. On bad days, they help get me through. Make up your mind today to not only savor the good times for yourself, but to give such moments away to someone you love today. Make them know how much you love them. Don't hold back. When tough times come, it may be the one thing to which they, cl they cling. So just to close from on the theme of love on a little bit of a lighter note, to enjoy the perspective of the younger children among us as they speak of love, the def some definitions of love that they share. You really shouldn't say, I love you unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say it a lot. When my grandmother got arthritis, she could not bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love. Love is when your puppy licks your face even after you left him alone all day. Love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving cologne and they go out and smell each other. Love is what makes you smile when you're tired. Love is when you go out to eat and give somebody most of your french fries without making them give you any of theirs. Hopefully that can be a little more of a, an opportunity coming soon for us. A little bit about unconditional love in that remembrance or that reflection of a young child. And then I always go back to Captain Kangaroo who spoke to children and when his show was over, he would say, tell someone you love that you love them, and that's sure to make it a better day. And I think we all know the truth of, of that, as it is, again, a reflection of the many ways that we can share God's gifts of love. As Jesus has told us, that's part of our calling as disciples. Amen. The hymn that we sing as a reflection of our sermon today is They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, and together we will spread the news that God is in our land. We will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Amen. We share the affirmation of faith now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit.